Imagine walking into a Walgreens or a CVS and being able to get your hands on like a limitless pill, okay? Like, like a powerful nootropic that's gonna increase your memory and make you feel just almost invincible and just give you just that feeling of mental acuteness that you need. Well, that's the purpose of this video. I'm gonna give you five nootropics that you can just go and find at your local grocery store or your local pharmacy. Okay, nothing crazy, don't need to go to Amazon, don't need to do a bunch of crazy research. These are simple things that are over the counter that will boost your brain performance and they're powerful. Okay, so we'll break it all down. I'm gonna give you five of them, give you the science, give you the details and the practical applications. Hey, I do invite you to come back to my channel every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. You might not get a notification, so you should be coming to the channel because there's new videos every single day. But I do want you to hit that bell icon as well so you can turn on notifications. And also, after this video, check out Four Sigmatic. Okay, so Four Sigmatic is like a mushroom coffee. You've probably seen them at Whole Foods before, maybe you've seen them online. Anyhow, special discount for those of you that want to jump on that train, because that is some seriously good stuff. Whether you're keto, fasting, or just looking for mental performance, Four Sigmatic is the jam when it comes down to boosting your mental energy. So there's a link down below in the description. Just check them out after this video. Okay, now the five things. First off is Alpha GPC. Alpha GPC stands for alpha glycerophosphocholine. Okay, alpha glycerophosphocholine is uh, something that provides choline for our bodies. Now, choline helps provide sort of a cellular membrane. We could go on long tangents about choline, but essentially, choline is a precursor to what's really important here, and that's acetylcholine. Okay, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is kind of the spark of energy. Without acetylcholine, we don't get the, the spark. Okay, what's what actually is kind of lighting things up and making energy transfer. It's very complicated, but the long story short is that acetylcholine is gonna be very powerful when it comes down to brain performance. If you have low levels of acetylcholine, like muscles don't contract right, the brain doesn't send the signal right, it can really mess things up. So what alpha-GPC does is it alters this neuronal excitability, okay, particularly by increasing the input to the prefrontal cortex. So basically we're lighting up the prefrontal cortex more because we're having acetylcholine come in there. What's interesting is that alpha-GPC also has acetylcholinesterase inhibition effects. Acetylcholine sterase is what breaks down acetylcholine and renders it useless. So what this means is that when you take alpha GPC, you not only are increasing your levels of acetylcholine, but you're decreasing the amount in which acetylcholine is broken down. It has a unique ability to cross through the blood-brain barrier. So when you take alpha GPC, you get your prefrontal cortex lit up in a very positive way that improves memory and it can improve actually physical performance as well, which is exactly why I want to reference this one study. The Journal International Society of Sports Nutrition took a look at test subjects broken into four groups. Alpha GPC at 200 milligrams, alpha GPC at 400 milligrams, caffeine, and then a placebo. So they wanted to measure a few things like a uh, subtraction test, which is like how quickly they could subtract certain things, uh, spatial awareness and memory. They wanted to measure even some physical performance and they wanted to measure jitteriness, just kind of the side effect, right? So here's what's wild. They found that there was a big improvement in the speed of the subtraction test. We got like 6.13 seconds for the alpha GPC group, 7.3 seconds for the caffeine group and 6.9 seconds for the placebo group. Yeah, strangely enough, placebo outperformed the caffeine group. We don't really know why. Point is, is alpha GPC was definitely something that made them think faster. Now, when it came down to power, there was like a 9% increase in their overall performance and power with a vertical jump. So not only are we getting a mental boost, we're getting a physical boost too. Again, because acetylcholine plays a big role in sort of that spark and being able to send a signal from the brain to the muscle. So very powerful there too. Now what's interesting is when you look at uh, the jitteriness effect, there was no effect when it came down to the jitters with uh, alpha GPC. But of course there was an effect with caffeine. So you get more performance with alpha GPC, mentally and possibly even physically, than you do with caffeine. Now in my opinion, I would almost combine alpha GPC and caffeine. Both two simple things that you could get over the counter at any kind of pharmacy. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's talk about number two. This is a simple one that you can get just about anywhere. And that's gonna be just a couple grams of creatine. Okay, creatine in small amounts is very, very good for your brain. Remember, the brain is using like 20, 25% of our energy throughout the day. 
That little teeny sucker is using so much of a fifth of our energy. So that means that it still requires adenosine triphosphate to make energy. So what happens is you have creatine, which has an ability to bind to a phosphate molecule to make ATP. Normally, we have to breathe oxygen, we have to go through this whole process to create ATP. But if we have creatine available, it can sort of artificially, I guess you could call it that, create more energy by binding to ATP. People think creatine is only for muscles. Not at all. In fact, it's almost more powerful in the brain. So you only need like two grams of creatine, and that's going to be a really powerful nootropic, especially if you combine it with the alpha GPC we just talked about. Okay, now let's talk about lion's mane. Lion's mane is a mushroom but it's something that you could now get your hands on just about anywhere. In fact, I've seen lion's mane at CVS, I've seen lion's mane at Walmart, and of course you can get lion's mane at like Whole Foods and things like that. Probably one of the least expensive nootropics that you can get your hands on next to creatine. And the reason that it works in a nootropic effect is because it boosts what's called nerve growth factor. Nerve growth factor, just like the name implies, it grows neurons, it grows brain cells. It literally sort of helps saturate a brain cell to help it grow and recover. So we need this, especially if we're taxing our body a lot. Now it also helps with what's called remyelination. The myelin sheath is like the insulating factor of a wire. Think about a wire, think about the insulative coating. Okay, that's your myelin sheath. If that gets worn down, then you don't send a signal very well. So nerve growth factor and lion's mane help with that remyelination. Now additionally, there are studies that are now showing that lion's mane can help the removal of beta amyloid plaque, which can contribute, of course, to Alzheimer's disease. So powerful stuff, short-term and long-term. Now the next two I'm gonna reference have a little bit more to do with cerebral blood flow, but still really interesting stuff. Okay, this first one is pine bark extract, known as pycnogenol. Pycnogenol is a specific form of antioxidant known as anthocyanidins. Okay, now this pycnogenol, it's interesting how it works. It really works in two particular ways. Okay, in one way, it affects the endothelial layer of a vessel, a blood vessel. So basically it allows the blood vessel to relax and produce more nitric oxide, which therefore allows more blood flow. And it can cross through the blood brain barrier. So it allows more blood flow specifically in the brain, which means more oxygen delivery, more nutrient delivery, more micronutrient delivery, and more mineral delivery, and overall just feelings of well-being. But it has other properties too. It has antioxidant properties. And because it's unique and can cross the blood brain barrier, it has an effect on limiting reactive oxygen species and overall oxidative damage within the brain. So that means the cellular waste that your brain creates when it's operating fast ends up getting neutralized and not having as negative of an effect. So let's take a look at some research to see how this really works. There's a study that was published in the Journal of uh, Neurosurgical Sciences. Okay, it took a look at just taking 50 milligrams of pycnogenol three times per day for 12 weeks. Okay, get this. There was almost a 9% increase in mental performance there was a 14% increase in memory, and then there ended up being a 30% decrease in reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress within the brain. Okay, so improvements in memory, improvements in mental performance, all while making the brain healthier and more sustainable. Okay, very simple. 50 milligrams of that stuff that you can get at Walgreens is gonna make a big difference for you. Lastly, one that you can find just about anywhere is ginkgo biloba. And ginkgo works along the same kind of lines as pine bark extract, similar lines to pycnogenol. Okay, it helps improve nitric oxide, improves blood flow to the brain. Any opportunity to improve blood flow and be able to cross the blood-brain barrier in a positive way is a very good thing for your mental energy and your ability to articulate and just access a broader vocabulary and just feel smarter, right? It's just, it's beneficial. But additionally, ginkgo promotes more acetylcholine release. So whereas alpha GPC directly increases acetylcholine, ginkgo indirectly increases acetylcholine. So if you wanted to make a killer stack, you really could combine all of these, but you really only need one at a time. So that boost in acetylcholine is gonna give you more mental spark, plus the blood flow is gonna deliver more of that, and it's gonna be pretty darn powerful. And lastly, a study that was published in the journal Neural Regeneration Research found that it can actually improve nerve stem cells or neural stem cells, so in particular areas of the brain. So what that means is if you have a few just dead brain cells, maybe from, I don't know, sucking up helium when you were a kid or something like that, or holding your breath for too long, you might be able to regenerate some of that because stem cells are what are going to allow those things to regrow. It's a little bit in its early stages, but it's still nice to see that ginkgo has these powerful effects on the brain. So there you have it, five simple things that you can get for dirt cheap at the grocery store so you don't have to spend a fortune on nootropics. As always, make sure you're coming back here every day, same time, same bat place, same bat channel. As always, see you in the next video.